So in this tutorial, what we're going to do is look at how we can actually patch up this uh, this bit here, uh, or clean up the clean up our patch. So um, obviously, where we have frame fifty nine. Uh, and we actually grab the patch from frame 59, it matches perfectly. But as soon as we move away from frame 59, you can see that the, the, both the blur, the amount of blur in that patch, uh, and also in some cases, um, the exposure of that patch, obviously as we're moving around the room, the exposure of that patch is also changing as well. Um, it, it's not matching. Okay. So we need to fix both of those things. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the blur. OK, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a couple of nodes that kind of work together. So I'm going to add them into here after our scan line render. So if we think about our workflow, this is our 3D bit. And after it comes out of here, it's 2D. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a motion blur 3D. OK, and what that's going to do is it's going to use this camera to kind of figure out how much motion blur there should be. Uh, in this uh, scene that we're seeing, okay? Um, okay, and what we want to do is output the motion blur information, okay? Uh, so, the, so the amount of movement, so what this is doing is working out how much the, uh, uh, how much the uh, movement there would be in the, um, uh, how much blur there would be in the uh, up and uh, up axis or the horizontal and vertical axis or as it refers it, refers to it, the UV axes in our video. Okay. We want to output that information onto the motion um, channel. Okay. So this UV information about the, how much blur there should be in each axis comes on this motion channel. Then what we're going to do is we're going to, so this analyzes the camera and the video to work out how much blur there should be. And then what we want to do is we want to use the vector blur node. Okay. So we're going to use the vector blur node to actually apply the blur. So we need to tell the, the vector blur node that we want to affect the RGB. And we want to tell the vector blur node that we're going to use the, um, uh, the motion channel that was generated in our motion blur node. OK. All right. And you can see that what it's done is it's actually added some blur in there for us. And if I kind of move it, you can see it's doing a pretty good job of trying to match it up so that's pretty good we're still going to have to go in there and noodle it okay but actually a lot of our problems are kind of coming from the gain okay so what we're going to do is we're going to add a uh, uh sorry uh yeah uh, uh we're going to add a grade node in here uh so that i can go into this and i can adjust the gain to kind of make this patch match, okay? Again, so I can make it match. Uh, I could blur it a little bit. I could feather it in a little bit more if I felt I needed to. Uh, I think I'm fairly happy with that as well, okay? So um, where we're happy with things, um, so I might just go into uh, where I wanna, so what we wanna do is adjust the gain to kind of make the patch match in terms of intensity. And what we also want to do is adjust the multiply in this vector blur node to kind of increase or decrease the amount of blur that we're applying to our uh, patch uh, at any one point in time. So something like that. OK, when we're happy with it, what we want to do is um, we're not going to you're not going to find a single value of these that's going to be correct for the whole thing, because obviously if we go now that I've edited that, if I go back to frame 59 where everything did match before, what we'll see is. Well, actually, that's not it. Oh, there, there we are. We can see our patch. We can see that our patch doesn't match so well now. OK, so there isn't going to be a happy value that's going to work for all of these uh, for the whole range. So what we need to do is we need to animate these two. OK, so if I put this game back to one, OK, and probably put this multiply back down, probably don't need that much multiplication on there at all. Uh, I might sort of put it on point four, something like that. OK, uh, and then what I can do is on both of these, I'm just going to go set key and I'm going to go into uh, the gain and I'm going to go set key. And then what I can do is just simply as I move this along and I can kind of see where it's not matching, I can kind of then noodle these two values to match it and it will then set a key for that. Now, I want to try to avoid doing this every single frame. So a good little technique is to kind of find frames where it nearly matches like this. 
and that's pretty close i think i just need to adjust the blur a bit and maybe no, I don't think I need to do anything with the game. Uh, and as I did that, that's kind of inserted another keyframe there. Okay. Uh, and then what I want to do is find where it's kind of the most out. So here it's quite a bit out on the blur. So I can then kind of go, right, well, let's match that up a bit. And again, with the gain, I think it needs to be a little bit darker, maybe. Okay. And as we do that, you can see it kind of helps cover up the other parts. So that's kind of what I do is I go through, find where it matches. So it's matching pretty well here, matching pretty well here, matching pretty well here. So it's matching pretty well all the way along there. So I would be kind of tempted to kind of go, let's just go... Yeah, you, know, you can just go rather than moving this to set a keyframe, just go set keyframe. We're happy with that. Set keyframe. We don't want to mess around with that. Uh, and then you can kind of go to a bit in the middle where we can kind of see that's a little bit out there. Uh, I think we just need to add a bit more blur there. Okay. You can see it's kind of bringing it in and it's kind of making this patch work. Okay. And we keep just moving on like that. Just keep going through the process um of matching the blur and the gain okay where you need to but what you're trying to avoid doing is doing it every single frame okay so now that we've done that um so if you go through this process you should end up with a result which is similar to uh, what we have in my final patch here so i press two uh, great that we have on our final patch here. Uh, let me just run that through and cache that so you can kind of see the final result. Okay. So um, in the final version where I've noodled it and worked with it, you can see that this patch is working nicely. So yeah, it needs a bit of noodling at the end of it, but uh, fundamentally the approach works and uh, gives you the solution you want.